This presentation is to give you a basic introduction to run GDAP, a program developed by Mark Horridge at the COPS at Monash University. Run GDAP provides a simplistic visual interface to running various GEMPAC programs. Luckily, you don't need much knowledge about GEMPAC programs to be able to use this interface. Run GTAP will allow you to do simulations or experiments using the GTAP model and database. Today we will discuss the various inputs into Run GTAP. There are three basic inputs, the database, the model, and the experiment. You may be able to change each of these according to the study that you're interested in. So in this presentation today, we will go over how you may proceed doing this. So first let's open Run GTAP. You may do this by double clicking the small icon on your desktop. So this should come when you have installed Run GTAP using the default settings. And when you double click this icon, you should open up to this page of Run GTAP with this beautiful picture of the world at night created by the NASA. So now let's, so as you've opened Run GTAP, you will see that it opens to a particular version. So you can see at the top, there is the version book 3x3 three three and to a particular experiment. You may be able to change a version at any time you want by clicking version, change. And this opens up a set of versions that are already saved under the Run GTAP. So when you have installed the software, there are several versions have come along with it. So today we are interested to look into the book 3x3 three three version. And let's click on that and click OK. So this have now opened the version book 3x3. Three three. And under the versions tab, you can see um, a brief orientation to this version. So there is a summary that talks about what this version does and what the objectives of this version is. So the objective is to simulate the effect of a 10% cut in the power of ad valorem tariff on the US food exports to the EU. And the same experiment is run using two different solution methods, the linear Johansson method and the linear nonlinear Gregg method. The section below talks a little bit about the regions and commodities in this aggregation. So there are three regions, the USA, EU, and the rest of the world. And there are three sectors, food, manufacturing, and services in this version of the model. Further below, um, the version description talks a little bit about the experimental files, the shocks to the model, so the shock on food exports, that on the tax of food exports from USA to EU. It talks a little bit about closures and the solution method and we will learn a little more about each of these as we go along. And it describes the different experiments that are already saved under this version. So now given that we know a little about the version, let's go and look at the model that this version is reading. You can do this by clicking version and then modules. This will open up this box and here you can see that there are two parts to the modules. There is a global settings and then there is some version specific settings. So let's look at the global settings. Here on the first um, first row you see gtap so here this is a gtap.tab file this is where the main gtap model is written and when we run a simulation the model this model actually runs this tab file this is a main gtap model file and this is in fact the standard gtap model underneath you can see a set of other tab files and each of these have a different function. For example, the shocks will create some shock levels for different variables, for different policy shocks. 
the GTA view will create some um, other ways of viewing the basic database of the GTAP. The GTAP volume will represent the volume changes and so forth. So each of these tab files have a different function and they work with the main model, the main GTAP.tab file. So when we have a yes underneath the run, this means each of these additional files are all running when we run a simulation. Now let's look at the version specific settings and here you see that there are no version specific files and um, they're not also chosen to be running so this means that under this version we're only running the global settings and these files come under directly under the run gtab directory under your C drive so you will see these files in the main folder well, if you were to have any version specific files, you will see those files under under the book 3x3 three three version. So if you were to have a different version of the GTAP model, then you would include it within that version, the book 3x3 three three version, and you would click yes on these to make them run. But for now, let's um, not worry about this. Right now, we only are running the global settings. So let's click OK since um, this is how we want the model to run. Now we have learned a little bit about the orientation to the, ver uh, to the version, the book 3x3 three three version, what type of model is running. Let's now look at the solve page to look at experiments. So from the solve page, you may be able to load an experiment. You do this by clicking load experiment. And here you can see there are a set of several experiment files already saved under this version. And you can click any to load that particular experiment. In fact, if you read along, you will see that each experiment is a different variation of the same shock of tariff cut of on US food exports to the EU but they're just using a different closure or they're using a different solution method so we're glad to use the first experiment so let's just click OK and this means we have experiment 1 loaded let's talk very slightly about the solution method so right now we are using the linear Johansson method you can run you can choose a different solution method you can choose Euler or you can choose Crag and these are nonlinear methods of solution you can also choose automatic accuracy to improve the accuracy of the results from 80% to say 85% and so on but let's now just see stick to the Johansson and let's not make any changes so let's click OK here and you will learn more about the solution method as we go along now that we know a little bit about the model the aggregation of the countries and sectors and the experiment let's now delve a little more into the details of each of these let's begin by looking at a little bit into the database so we click here view and base data and here you see there are different ways of viewing the data there is core data there is gtab view output there is tax, tax rates and then the various GE and PE elasticities so the core data is the main database that is read in to run the model. So we will first look into the core data. Gta view output is another way of displaying the core data. So it is just displayed in a more familiar way for economists. Tax rates are also derived from the core data because they are the wedges between the different types of prices such as the agent's price, the market price and the world price 
and you will learn more about this as we go along. So let's first open up the core data. So this has opened in a file format called the HAR H, the header array file format. So this has opened a view HAR file. Here you can see that there are many different headers and each of these are like a different spreadsheet. So here you can see the names of the different headers. For example, the header save has data on savings. There is a type RE. Most of these are REs suggesting uh, the, v the data is input in, in terms of real numbers. There is a dimension component. So the savings commodity has a single dimension of reg, that is region. So it is a one-dimensional variable. We have a total. So this will tell us that the total savings of the world, of all regions, is given by this amount. In other cases, the total is not very sensible. For example, if it's in matrix form with, say, two dimensions instead of one, then this total isn't very meaningful. But for a single dimensional, we know what a total means. And here we have the not long name for what this variable is about. So we have savings at agents' prices. So in order to look at this, uh, this particular spreadsheet on save, we have to double click on this. And you will see the savings by each of the different regions. So recall that we had three regions in this version, the USA, EU and rest of the world and each of these are showing the savings from each separate country. Notice the toggles at the top so you can choose to view a particular region, say only USA from this toggle or you can select all region the toggle on the left top corner allows you to cho choose the number of decimal places so you may put this into as many as six or as less as zero decimal places you can also do a column or row total so in this case a column total would make sense so if the total world saving was one then 71 percent is saved by the rest of the world 24% by EU and about 4.8% by the USA. So these are small useful features of the view har and the more you um, try you will see that you will learn many other aspects of view har. So let's come back to the main menu by double clicking. So we have looked into the variable saves. Let's see what other variables are included in the base data. So let's look at VDFA. So this is the value of domestic purchases of the firms at agents' prices. So as you will see, many of the following variables start with V, denoting it's a value flow. DF denotes that these refer to the domestic purchases made by the firms. And the A at the end denotes it's at valued at agents' prices. So VDFA is the firm's domestic purchases at agents prices. And this is defined over three sets, the tradable commodities, the produced commodities, and the region. So it will tell us how much of tradable commodity is demanded by a producer producing a certain good in a particular region. So let's double click here and look into this data. First, before um, looking into the details, we have to make sure that we have the toggles right. So, say we want to look at all Tradcom, all Prodcom, and we select USA. We don't want to look at a sum, we want to look at a particular country. So here this will tell us the amount of expenditure of the food sector on food 
the amount of expenditure of the food sector in manufacturing and the amount of domestic food uh, domestic services purchases by the food sector so these are the different domestic purchases of the food sector you can see the same for the manufacturing sector in the USA the services sector and so on you can look at the cost structure of firms for the EU and the rest of the world by simply changing the toggles so let's click out of here to the main menu and let's look at the next variable VDFM in fact this is the same variable as VDF except it is valued at market prices instead of agents prices and hence the M instead of the A and as you will see the wedge between the agents and market prices are due to some sort of taxes in the economy so these are the value flows of firms purchases denoted at market prices then in the database we have VDGA now this G over here refers to the government purchases government's domestic purchases and agents prices so as you know we have three agents in the model the firms the government sector and private households denoted by F G and P so these are referring to the other agents of the model so VDGA VDGM is referring to the value flows associated with the government VDPA and VDPM refer to the value flows associated with the private households so for example private households will also be purchasing from the domestic economy so let's look here let's look at the USA and all Tradcom so the private household in the USA is spending this much on food this much on manufacturing and this much on services so these are the private households expenditures at agents prices and you can look at the same one for market prices further below let, let's skip VFM and look at VIFA so we have looked at V DFA now we're looking at VIFA so the only difference is instead of domestic now we're looking at imports so these are the value of firms purchases from abroad firms imports at agents prices so firms not only use domestic goods for production but they also import from abroad and as you would expect VIFM refers to the same value flow but this time evaluated at market prices and you can also see governments demands from abroad and the private households demands from abroad now what is VKB as you can read here VKB is the value of capital stock the beginning of period capital stock so the each economy is endowed with a certain amount of capital stock denoted by VKB we have another coefficient here VXMD what is this this is trade flows bilateral exports at market prices so the value of exports at market prices so by looking at this variable we know how much of a certain good is being exported from one region to another so let's click here just to see how the data looks so now let's click the right toggles say we click on food and we click all region to all region to see how much of food is being exported from one region to another so USA is exporting this much of food to the EU and this much to the rest of the world the EU is exporting this much of food to the USA and this much to the rest of the world so these are the value flows of bilateral exports you can also find the corresponding imports by looking at VIWS so this are, these are the value of imports at world prices we also have the value of exports at world prices so these are um, 
same uh, similar coefficients but valued at different prices. We have two other variables, VTWR. You can see it's called the value of transport services at world prices. And this other variable, VST, and these two are the ones that relate to the shipping services. So we need some sort of transportation services to move goods from one region to another and these two variables are referring to those transport services. We haven't covered the variable EVOA. This is a similar value flow but it's the E at the beginning refers to endowments so it's the value of endowment output at agents prices. So the endowments in the economy are land, labor and capital so you can see how much of land supply there is in the USA, how much of labor supply there is, how much of capital supply there is in the USA. So these are the endowment. So more or less we have covered most of the data that is included in the core data. So this is um, one of the main data files that are used as an input to the GTAP model. There is also a parameter file and we will talk very briefly about this shortly. So let's close this using the red cross and we have returned to run GTAP. Let's look at view and now into parameters. Here we have the different parameters that are also inputs to the model. For example, the E sub D parameter tells us the elasticity of substitution between domestic and Im imported Im inputs in production. So there are various parameters and as you learn the GTAP model, you will learn how these are calibrated. Uh, how these are estimated and where these go into the equations of the model. So let's close this. So we know the main data files, the core data and the parameter files and now let's go and look a little bit into the model. There are some other data that are derived from the core data this is a GTAP view output. It is simply another way of viewing the same data in a more familiar way for economists. So let's click here to see the data. So at the top you can see that we have GDP by expenditure. This is equal to consumption, investments, government, expenditure plus exports minus imports. Let's click here and the USA and we can see the different components of government of the GDP expenditure. Let's click out of here and uh, the next header is GDP by source. So this will be the total income accounting for taxes and depreciation. So basically these are different ways of displaying the same data on exports, imports, GDP, capital account, current account, etc. And you may be able to go through each of these on your own to see what kind of data we have in the, in the database of GTAB view. So let's close this for now and look into uh, keep on looking to the base data. So next we have tax rates. So let's click here to see the different tax rates. So this, these tax, rate, tax rates are at the ad valorem equivalent. And um, we have output tax denoted by TO. We have taxes on endowment we have export taxes, we have import taxes, so these are different tax rates that are um, included in the model. 
So let's close this. And now that we know a little bit about the data inputs, the parameters, let's look quickly into sets before we delve into the model. So the model uses several sets. As you have seen, the base data had different dimensions defined over different sets. So for example, header H1 is the set reg. This is the regions in the model. When you click this, you will see that the three regions are named here. The USA, EU and rest of the world. So this is to tell the model that we have a set reg and these are the different elements of the set. Let's click out. We have a set called Tradcom. These are the different traded commodities. And if you recall from the version description, we had three sectors in the model, the food, manufacturing and services. Let's click out of here. We have a margin, margins commodities set, a capital goods set, and the endowment commodities set, and the endowment is defined to be land, labor, and capital. So these are the different sets in the model. And as you will see, each of these are read into the model to tell the model what the different sets are. So let's close this. And our next goal is to look into the model. And you can see the model by clicking View tab files and main model. So this will open up to the gtap.tab file that we were looking at from modules if you recall under the global setting of modules so it will open up the main model that describes the various variables and equations in the model. So here we have the gtap model written in the Tableau language in the tab file Anything beginning with an exclamation mark is commented out. So all the letters in blue are descriptions of the model and they're commented out from the model. So here you can see a description of where you might be able to find more about the model, the documentation, the book of Hurtle and Thikas and the structure of standard GTAP model will tell you more about the structure of the GTAP model, the production, consumption and various aspects of the model. There are technical papers that tell you more about the model as well. As we go further down, we see an overview of the gtab.tab structure. So here you see we have files run into the gtab model. There are sets. We talked about these the descriptions of various sets. So these are also read into the model. We have some read statements of the base data. So these read statements are reading in the data from the base data. So the core data is being read in. We have we define several variables, some coefficients, and then we head on towards the modules. So in the modules are the modules are divided into different categories according to the topic. For example, we start with the government consumption, we talk a little bit about private consumption, then we move into the firm. So the tab file is organized into different modules and each module deals with a certain behavior for a certain aspect of the model or for a certain agent, such as the firms in the model. Then we have some appendices with summary indices some calculations for measuring welfare in terms of equivalent variation and some other welfare measures in terms of terms of trade decomposition. So this is the structure of this tab file. Now let's starting from the top let's look a little more into how each of these are written in the Tableau language. So scrolling further down you can see here are the files so we're telling um, we're telling the tab file what we are reading in to the model. So these are the different header array files that are being read in. So gtap sets, you have looked into the sets file from the run gtap main menu. You have also looked into the gtap data, the core data is being read in here. 
and the parameter file. So these are the three inputs into the model. The next thing is sets. So we have already seen how we have described the sets. Here you can see the different sets and how they overlap in the model. We have looked a little bit into Tradcom, the tradable commodities and the Prodcom. This is um, simply a description, so this is commented out. And here is where the each of the elements of the sets are being read in. So this tableau command says set reg reg maximum size 10 read elements from file gtap sets header h1. So it is telling the model to read header 1 from file gtap sets and it is called reg. So if you recall we have looked into the file sets and under header 1 we have seen it describes the set regions and we saw the different elements of the set regions was the different countries or the different regions the USA, EU and the rest of the world. So these commands are telling the model to read the different sets and their elements from the gtap sets file. Let's scroll further down and you here you can see some subsets are defined some set sizes are fixed and now we come to the read statements of the base data so these read statements are reading the data off the core data so we have looked into the core data different elements of it and here you will see how the model is reading them so let's start by looking into saving first two variables are defined the p save is the price of savings and the q save is the regional demand for net savings net of depreciation so the variable save which is in fact a value flow this is the total total savings it's a product of price and quantity and here we're defining a coefficient for save and we are updating it to a new level so when the model is run if there are any changes in the price of saving or the quantity of saving this update statement will ensure that savings are increasing or decreasing accordingly so this is written in a linearized form so all small letters denote percentage changes so p save actually denotes the percentage change in the price of savings and the q save denotes the percentage change in the quantity of savings so these are in small letters so this is an update statement telling us that when we run a simulation and when there are changes in prices and quantities final level of savings will change and the save initial level of savings is read from the core data under the header save we have already looked into the core data into the header array file and we have seen that under save their savings is defined over the different regions the USA, EU and the rest of the world and <coughs> this is the data that is being read into the model in terms of initial savings as we scroll further down we see other statements that are reading other data from the core data we have looked into VDGA so VDGA is under header VDGA so this is government's expenditure on domestic consumption at agents prices and similarly there's a read statement to set the initial level of the value flow of government expenditure on domestic goods and there's an update statement to ensure that if there are any changes in prices and quantities that the level is updated after a simulation so here we have several read and update statements for different coefficients from the core data. So you can look through these different coefficients and it is categorized into according to different agents. We looked into private consumption firms, we looked into government and so on. The global bank. If you scroll further down you will see the next category in the tab file is that of common variables. 
So here there are different variables being defined. For example, the y variable y is the regional household income for defined over the region R. So here different variables are being defined. There is a population variable or the variables are being declared over here. There is a QOE, this is a supply of sluggish endowment I to be used in the sector J in some region R. So different variables are being defined over different sets. And these are called common variables because these are used across the different modules. If you recall the gtab.tab file <coughs> is categorized into different modules and each module talks about a different topic or a different agent and these variables are commonly defined because they are used across each of these modules. Suppose now we are interested to look at firms, the module under firms, to see how a typical module is characterized. So at the top you will see a description of the module. So these are all in blue characters, so these are just notes to tell us the behavior of firms under this module. So this is the production structure of the economy. QO is a variable denoting the percentage changes in the quantity of output. And this output is produced using two inputs, QVA and QF. This is the quantity change in the value added and QF is the quantity change in the intermediate input. So this production structure is a CES, nested CES structure. So as we go along we have different CES nets, nests. So output is produced using two types of composite inputs and each of these inputs are in turn produced using other inputs such as the endowment inputs are used so land, labor and capital is used to produce a composite value added input. So this describes the production structure and you can learn more about it from the short course or the GTAB book. So let's look at this module. The module starts by talking about the module specific variables. Then it is also spread into different categories. So it's talking about the total output nest, the composite intermediates nest, the value added nest, and the zero profits nest. So at the beginning, the module will specify the variables that are being used within this module only. For example, PVA denotes the percentage change in the firm's price of value added of the industry J used in R. Similarly, QV QVA is the percentage change in the quantity of value added of industry J in region R. So here we declare a set of prices and quantities and let's look further down to some specific equation. For example, let's look at a particular equation. So QVA tells us the demand for the primary factor the primary value added composite input. It depends upon QO which is the targeted output level and it depends upon a set of prices PVA and PS. And this is also dictated by an elasticity. Recall this was a CES function so there is a elasticity of substitution between the value added and the intermediate input which dictates the derived demand for QVA. So when value added inputs are cheaper, the sector J would be inclined to use more of value added input rather than intermediates in their production. So this is the idea and you will get a better understanding of this when you've looked into the theory. But this is the idea of how these equations are written in the tab file. So if you go further along you will see there are different modules as you've seen at the introduction. So we have we have looked a little bit into the firm's modules. There are different modules explaining the behavior of different aspects of the economy. So 
the aspect of international trade, the aspect of investment, global bank and savings, international transport services. So this model really divides it up into different modules and talks about the different aspects of each of these. So let's now close this and return to the main file. So you have learned a little bit about how to look into the database. You've looked a little bit into the main model and you've learned a little bit about experiments. So this presentation is to give you a very basic overview of how you should go about working in RunGTAP and this is a long learning process and you will learn it step by you will learn each of the mechanisms step by step as you go. Thank you.